Okay, so today we're working on a 2010 Audi A4 Quattro 2 liter turbo. The customer has bought a turbo upgrade. Uh, he was having a low boost code. Not really sure if that was a cause of the turbo or another uh, issue with the engine. So he's bought this Utronic turbo upgrade and I'm in the process of installing it. Uh, I looked for videos to see if there was any obvious shortcuts. I've taken the air cleaner box out and the air induction stuff off. I had to heat a couple of these exhaust bolts to remove them, but there's two more. One down there that's not too difficult to get, but the bottom one down here, can't get at it from the bottom, can't get at it from the top. I'm not sure how we're supposed to get at it. Motor mount's in the way, drivetrain's in the way. And Audi likes to use uh, these spline drive bolts. This shield is held on with a bolt that's behind the exhaust manifold, so you have to take the exhaust manifold off to get the shield off. This is turning into a fun job. Anyways, I'm going to try and leave these pipes attached to the turbocharger so that I can remove them out with the turbocharger because there's no way I can get at this spline drive bolt holding this banjo fitting here. Leave this coolant pipe, this upper coolant pipe here, attached. Take these vacuum lines out of the way. But I'm not 100% certain on how the lower pipe connects because there's no, zero instructions in this kit. And this has got a hose on it like so. There's a couple of new hoses that came with this. I have no clue where they go. So far anyways. No instructions supplied with it. Went on the website and I couldn't find any information but I'll go and look again. There's got to be some information. Okay so I removed the O2 sensor and that gave me a little bit more room to access this back bolt back here. I heated it up with a torch and I managed to get it loose. It's just cooling off now. And I removed all of the exhaust manifold bolts so far. There's a, a brace of some kind, or not a brace, but a wedge on the bottom of the exhaust manifold holds it on. I hope there's only two bolts, but I got a bad feeling that there's one underneath here that I can't see. Oh, there is another one there. And another one there. Okay. And you have to use a 12 millimeter universal socket. I still got the one bolt at the front to get behind that shield. As I said, there's a bolt back there that holds that shield on, but you can't get an Allen wrench on it or an Allen socket on it because the exhaust manifold's in the way. If they put a conventional bolt in there, you could probably get it out. I think once I get the manifold off, I'll put a conventional bolt in there, remove that shield so that I can put it on after. Conventional bolt with a hex head. Still wondering how to get at this bottom bolt so I'm going to raise this up and uh, have a look at underneath. So here we are underneath the vehicle. I got the uh, cover taken off over there so you can gain access to everything. I've got the lower charge air cooler pipe off. It's brace disconnected here. Got a couple of wiring harnesses to disconnect. But that one turbocharger exhaust bolt is up inside there you can't get your hand up there and you can't get it from the back back here it's about eight inches past the back of the catalytic converter there plus we have to move the catalytic converter back so that means disconnecting this brace here probably take it off of the transmission and moving the exhaust back a couple of inches so that it disconnects from the turbocharger should move on the mounts enough I think but we'll have to disconnect this this brace right here. I'm still challenged by how to get at that bolt. Wow. Okay, so I managed to get it loose with 15 inch extension, a 6 inch extension, a universal joint, and a 20 inch extension. And it came loose, believe it or not. I was able to get it without heating it, thank goodness. It'd be a challenge to get it back together, but worse to get it apart. Okay, so I got it out. Challenge is you have to leave these lines attached. 
and you can get at these lines from underneath with a little bit of a challenge. Uh, this is the oil feed line, this looks like the oil return line, and coolant line in, and looks like a coolant return, but it could be the other way around. Uh, having a look at the wastegate on this, and you can see that this wastegate rod is worn out in the shaft where it goes through the turbocharger is worn out. So what that would result in is the wastegate is partially open all the time, as you can see here, and that would cause a loss of boost pressure and insufficient boost pressure. You can see the, the play in the turbo wastegate shaft. So it definitely needed a turbo. Now this aftermarket turbo, which is a performance upgrade apparently, has some different plumbing and as I mentioned before no instructions so I'm assuming that this elbow goes on like this and then it's going to attach to the existing cat uh, charge air cooler pipe going into the front and then there's this valve here looks like it might be a blow-off valve that must go in the line I'm not sure what this is for looks like uh, turbo speed sensor or something because it's in the compressor housing but it's not on this new turbocharger and of course this turbo comes with a a, uh, a cable and we have to do a download of new software into the ECU to make this thing work properly on the vehicle so hopefully that takes care of that so we got all the pipes transferred and the brace transferred I am going to change this or I have changed this brace bolt to a conventional bolt because it has to be tightened from the other side it was an allen headed screw it would be nearly impossible so this brace has to be left semi loose because it's got to be attached to the engine and we got the oil feed lines and coolant lines uh, they don't have a, a boss for these two lines to bolt to the engine or bolt to the uh, uh, casting here on the turbo and the blow-off valve has been removed from the existing one. It's going to go in the line now afterwards. So there it is installed in this line. And we'll put that on after with the plastic or the uh, ductwork. And the manifold is clean. We put some never sees on the studs. And hopefully drop this thing back in there. So there the manifold gasket's installed. I've installed the lower manifold wedges because the manifold just slides in there. Easier to get them on now with the new nuts supplied. And a little bit of never see is on each stud just to uh, make them easier to install new nuts. Uh, hopefully we can drop this in here without any significant challenge. I guess I should clean the mating surface of the cap. We'll do that first. So it turns out this the exhaust manifold is wider in this area here so to get at these two bolts there's one bolt you can see in the video camera there it's nearly impossible before I was able to go in with a straight socket I left the stud out of this side to uh, of the turbo so that I could get at that one back there that one's tight but this one on the front I had to use a bore scope to look at it with the bore scope while I tightened the nut up from the outside. I managed to get it. You must put that coolant pipe return banjo bolt on before you put the manifold and the, and the turbocharger in place. Otherwise, there's no way you can get a wrench in there to tighten that up either. So this is, uh, this is quite a challenge. So there's a view from the bottom of this turbo. You can see the oil feed line, the oil return line, and then way up above it, you can barely see it back in there. I'll point to it with this pointer. Is the coolant feed pipe way up here. And that's the one I said you must tighten before you put the manifold and turbocharger up against the block, otherwise there's no way you can get in there with anything to tighten it. Now I replaced that brace bolt that brace bolt that was up here where's my camera yes this brace bolt way up there I replaced it with a conventional bolt so we'll have to tighten it from the back side with a long extension and then we have to put the intake plumbing back on okay so here we are with the turbo pretty much installed 
heat shield back in place, O2 sensor installed, connected, blow off valve, the aftermarket blow off valve kit installed, and the new aftermarket hose going up to the air cleaner. So all that's left to really do is put the air cleaner on, air, air cleaner housing, fill the cooling system, change the oil, and we should be good to go for a road test. Well, we're back together and running. Coolant filled up, engine oil changed. Waiting for an email from the company in order to activate the programming cable to update the ECU software to take full advantage of this upgraded turbocharger. But otherwise, it seems to be pretty, pretty, pretty good. Okay, so we're going to try and update the uh, ECU software using this uh, Uniconnect Plus software download from the manufacturer of the turbo. cable is not responding. The cable is plugged in. Let's try resetting it. Let's try retry. Okay, for further support, please call. Well, I guess I'll give him a call. Okay, third time was a charm. Performance flash, I would imagine. Hmm. Well, I guess he's got to decide what he's going to run here. Stock, original, stock one, stage one, 91 octane, 93 octane. Please select the file needed. Well, I better give him a call and see what he wants to put into this thing. Okay, so we decided we'd go with stage one, 91 octane, mid grain. E20 and up is not available here in, in our area. You about to respond, okay. Okay, I'm going to pause this recording until it gets close to the end. No point sitting here for five minutes. So we're into it for about five minutes to get to this point. We're at about 97%, 98%. Mm. 
network code's probably set due to programming. Switch off the ignition. Click done. I see they have a diagnostic tool here. Let's have a look at that. Switch the ignition on. Let's clear the DTCs. That's it for a diagnostic tool. Just reading and clearing DTCs. Yes, that's it. Oh well, we'll hook up the Snap-on scanner and go for a road test. So I pushed it a little hard and this EPC light lit up and it lost power significantly and now it's in some kind of protection mode so I'm going to check it for codes. Exit and see what kind of fault codes it may have set. It ran fine. Over boost condition. Yeah. Let's clear the code and see what happens. Continued. Let's look at data again and go for another road test. The data parameters don't look realistic. They looks like the decimal place is out one on actual boost pressure. Let's make a custom data list. Deselect. Somebody thought I needed help. Probably do. Uh, current running routine, we'll look at that one. Engine torque limitation. Boost pressure control specified. Charge air pressure. Actual pressure. Go time since start, and then we're going to list graph it. Now the numbers look realistic. It's showing 44 psi boost, which is not logical because it's just sitting here idling. But we'll take it for a road test and record what happens. So we're getting a turbo overboost code and then it cuts engine power significantly. Tried the MaxiSys scan tool and it uh, shows about 2,770 hectopascals of boost pressure when it cuts engine performance right here. And that works out roughly, what do we say, 29, 26 psi boost pressure which wouldn't stand to reason it would cut it out. So we're going to try loading the, the stock tune. And uh, the other problem that I got is the snap-on scanner for some reason displays the boost pressure with one decimal place out of place by the, by the way it looks anyway. So we're going to try the stock tune and see if we still get the over boost condition. If we do, then there must be a problem with the wastegate control or the blow-off valve or whatever controls boost pressure. And then I guess we could put a boost pressure gauge in it, like a manual pressure gauge, tee it in and see what the actual boost pressure is registering. But we're gonna we're gonna try flashing it with a stock tune first. So I loaded the stock tune in this Audi, 
and we took it out for a good road test and the maximum boost pressure we got out of it was 2187 and it never set an over boost code goes like a scared rabbit I don't want to say how fast I was going but if they caught me they would have put me in jail and 2187 if you look at that works out to roughly 31 pounds 31 32 pounds per square inch but you have to subtract 15 from that so 17 18 pounds of boost pressure is pretty pretty respectable I think uh, given the fact that that other tune was setting a, a fault code I think we'll leave the stock tune in there for now maybe we'll check with the manufacturer of the turbo see if they've got any suggestions it seems that uh, that stage one is a little bit too aggressive. Maybe I'll go look at the forums and see what they have to say. The other issue is the snap-on scan tool appears to display the boost pressure. Uh, where is the charge pressure actual? Right here, right there where I got the mouse pointer. It displays it incorrectly. It displays it as 398. PSI it looks like the decimal place is off one so that'd be 39.8 and that's when it over boosted and that's approximately what it worked out to in hectopascals when I converted the one on the Autel scan tool here so we'll call it a night for now